Hello everyone, and my camera's not on, but welcome back to Roleplay <laughs> Swan Song. Welcome oh, I miss you guys. Dark I, Cloud? It's good know. to see you. I'm really, you know, it's all about Battlefront today, so I figured why not be Darth Vader? Mm. Close up. In, a, in the darkness. In the JP, darkness, I watched yeah. you be Darth Vader for I the very first time. Did you yep. like it? Yeah. That, it was, it was all, I mean, it was great the very first time when you started, like, when you had that realization, like, holy That I was shit. Darth Vader, yeah. I'm fucking Darth Vader, and I'm like, oh, I can fly. Oh, my God, I just threw my lightsaber halfway across the map and fucking sliced some dude's head off. Like, it was pretty hilarious. That's pretty awesome. Good. Well yeah. done. I oh. watched you die to Luke Skywalker, and then someone else kill him. Yeah. Dude, oh. it's actually terrifying when you find those two guys in, like, a hallway, because then they're just like, <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of, like, stare at the guy like, fuck, what do I do? And you start running backwards. Because what you do is you shoot wildly, miss every single time, and then just die, probably. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty, it's it's pretty much that exactly. But uh, enough about Battlefront, because I've been playing it all day. Uh, we, you were here last night. We don't even talk to you, do we? Anything in the past twenty four hours? What? I I was gonna, I, I was gonna say. <laughs> talk to me, oh, tell me, dude. Talk to like, me. Like this is this is hard to do. So I I just gotta say I, I mentioned on Twitter. Uh -huh. All seventy-two volumes of Naruto are on are on sale on Comixology for two hundred twenty-nine bucks. I saw you tweeting about that. What would that usually cost? A lot more. We're talking like three hundred fifteen dollars, man. Like Jeez. almost <laughs> like five hundred bucks for all the fucking novels, and like you can't carry around seventy-two novels like that. You can't. Wait, where did you Jeff do that. Good? Jeff could do so. It. Comixology. I'm trying to find 72. the deal. I'm gonna go look. You fucking can all load your years of a high, I don't understand how you're like the worst salesman for these things. You're always like, guys, this thing, you can't do it. You can't even carry <laughs> it. It's not you even physically it's possible. Com it's comic you can't carry the, the it, point, so it's fucking digital. The di That's yeah, the why digital. I'm saying, Jesus Christ. <laughs> all your salesman powers are for vape, though. Is what happened. Is you like focus yeah. on sales vape? <laughs> vape vapeology. I don't have to sell vapeology, man. That shit sells itself. <laughs> hey. You know what? Wait, I don't kill myself? Awesome. Let's vape all day. Anyway. You can't vape about that. everything. <laughs> you can't vape everything. Wait. Smoke vape Is day. this? I think that. Oh, no. There it is. Naruto cell. Oh, but buy you have to buy each one individually. Is there one for? No, it's just. But you get 72. There's oh, a bundle. There's, there's a, a package. package. Oh, yes. I got to find. Last night, you made me buy Bass's thing. And now. God. Now you're probably last night you sold him a bunch of bath salts. Oh, there I you ended go. up buying eighty dollars worth of fucking bath shit last night, so this is your fault. <laughs> Did you take a bath or not? No, like, man, it's not here yet. Chill. Sure, we don't all live in San Francisco. We don't get this. Yeah, fucking man, we don't get this fucking that three hour delivery. That's right. There's a, so the wait. There's you have to buy six bundles. What? No, there's one fucking bundle. I just sent it to you. Oh, you just linked it to me. Okay. Fuck. Why is this so hard for me to find on Comixology? They need to. It's just a terrible website. Let's be honest. You know. Save fifty-four percent. I mean, let's not lie. It needs a lot of work. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, actually, I mean. Well, Amazon you know, owns these guys. The, now. I don't know why it's not just on is, Amazon. Is that it's basically you just go in and you use the web interface to buy, and then you go to your tablet, and that interface is really good to yeah. just like find what you want and download it and read it. Um, but yeah. Oh my God! Wheat equals Darth Vapor. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. Credit to Luxer Forty Four. We nice were, we were, done. yeah. So I feel like there's an opportunity for a YouTube channel called Will It Vape. No, consider that so dangerous. Consider dude. what olive oil. Will your, it vape? Your mm, first challenge. Will it vape? <laughs> oh my fucking god! Oh no! no. Yeah, I filled uh, filled my vape up with some gasoline today. Uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> what movie? Oh yeah, I was watching Jurassic World. Is that the new one? Yeah, I like the part where he covers himself in gasoline so the monster doesn't smell him. I like that part. Yeah. Well, I think it was so that the monster would smell him as gasoline and not eat him because it smells like a toxic chemical. Was but that how that dinosaur, thought? how that dinosaur learned not to eat things covered in gasoline, I don't know because has it ever been exposed? I mean, no, it, it was some dude, genes. It was a gene. Oh, it wasn't the T Rex though. It was, it was the other thing, right? Well, now, the, now, now you're getting into, now you're getting into super spoilers because that's classified, as they said in the movie, guys. That's classified. Well, <laughs> that's wait, classified. is this the first time you saw it, JP? Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't see it in the movie theater. 
Oh man, that's too bad. That movie's awesome though, huh? I en- I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. Was I know bad. you did because it was fucking aw- at the end. You were all like, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. No, I, at the end I was just like, you know, yeah, that's what I wanted. That happened. <laughs> sure. I'll, yep, that's happening. Yep. Yep. Man, good. God, I don't want to get into again how much I am disappointed by that movie. We got it. Yeah, we, you guys already had your conversation. <laughs> hey, uh, in similar news, they announced they're going to make four more Transformers at least. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, nice. <they> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> they're like, but no, the way Wait, they Michael Bay was like, directed? all right. We're I don't know about get... that part, but just that they're going to make four more at least. Yeah, they, why not? But the way they announced it was, all right, guys. We are definitely making two more Mad Max movies and four more Transformers movies. All right! <laughs> just nice. little tiny... Yeah. Yeah. I saw that they're doing two more Mad Maxes or whatever. I saw that earlier this yeah, week. Yeah, that's good news. That was good. Yeah. There's only one Transformers movie, and it's the one that had fucking Spock and uh, Judd Nelson in it, and you that's it. The there are no other ones. Exactly. Oh. There's no other Transformers Wait, movies in my you mind. You got the power. <sighs> Oh, I guess Spock wasn't that. I yeah. yeah. It was the last movie uh, that Orson Welles did before he died. Look at his like long film <laughs> career, and that's how he capped it off. He's that's like, yeah, I'll just be in this 90-minute uh, toy commercial. Then I'm going to die. Wow, Skype just froze on everyone. That's good. We're off to a great awesome. start tonight. Yeah. Well, you Orson know, we all need to move. Hey, we're back. There we go. I can just look <laughs> down was, the entire was, time. I was, uh, there was a cloud. Yeah. I'm sorry, Orson. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> why are you looking at your cloud on? Oh yeah, there was a cloud just right in front of your face. That's great. <laughs> Jeff, did you end up seeing The Martian? Yeah, I did. We uh, we talked a lot of shit about that movie last night. I so did not talk shit. I, Go ahead, I, I gotta yeah. ask Jeff, did you enjoy the movie? So here's so here's the full story on that. Oh snap! It is a well done. Solid acted, very interesting movie in, in terms of like they really. I guess the book tries to get as close as it can to like being true scientific to accuracy yeah. about how you would survive in that situation. That said, every fucking movie about a realistic space operation is always the exact same goddamn movie. The launch goes up, someone gets left behind, is in trouble, something bad happens. They go back for him despite all odds. People are like, you're crazy for doing that. Don't you think about your family and how many days you'll be in our space? And they're like, but we're goddamn astronauts, and for fuck's sakes, we, we'll do it. And then they get him out. Jeff. Every fucking I time. Feel like, I feel like that movie, like that there that scene, because that scene, like you said, happens in every movie. Yeah. I'd love to just see one where they're like, we got we to gotta go back. We got to do the thing. And everyone's like, no, we got to vote no, on this. Lost. And they're all like, you know what? Fuck them. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's Adam, go. We're going Adam, home. I told Anna last night. The best version of this movie is it's called The Martian because they do. They're like, well, we can't get him. It's it's not re- responsible. Five of us for one guy. It's 180 and he ends minutes up of his a Mars as The Martian. He becomes the fucking Martian. So, like, all these people that are, like, one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh, my God, blows everything. Like, bet way better. Oh, so good. I'm like, what the fuck did you guys watch before that movie that, that like, Ugly Girl, Pretty Girl, Compare, Contrast did that for you? Like, it's a good movie, but... The ending is so goddamn predictable. Jeff Daniels is like, "No, we're not doing it because NASA response money." And then, and then the other guy's like, "Yeah, you know, Sean Bean's like, yeah, goddamn coward." And he goes behind, covertly tells the the astronauts, and they have a five minute scene where they're like, "Are we gonna do this?" And they're like, "Yeah." For so, five minutes, and then they so go and do it. I don't. I don't want to actually. We shouldn't actually talk about the scene because it's it's way funnier to see it happen, but. The whole scene where they really heavily acknowledge that Sean Bean is in the movie, I thought was really funny. You know what I'm talking that, about? Yes, that was also that, very awkward. It was weird when that, because I was like, did they just, I looked I, around I, me, I was like, did that just happen? It like, happened what? in the audience that I was into where everybody kind of looked at each other like, is that, was that a, th-? and then everybody started laughing and it, the movie had moved on already. Yeah. Nice. That's, That's what I'm saying. saying. There's it's funny parts, it's about. well acted, it's a good movie. And, and for like a lot of people, if you're like, fuck off, Jeff, like Apollo 11, uh, the one with fucking Sandra Bullock and every other movie in outer space is some of my favorite mm-hmm. stuff. You, you're gonna enjoy. This you know movie. what you need to watch? You've probably seen it, but you need to watch Moon. That's what yeah, you yeah Moon is cool. Yeah, Clones. Moon is cool. Um, okay. But Taylor, but Jeff, don't look up the 36 dramatic situations because uh, spoiler alert, 
all movies are the same. There, there are no new stories. Yeah, there's no. I know, I know, I know that theory. Ever. Ever. <laughs> so, so the other genre that's just completely dead to me too is sport movies. Exactly the same. Always yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah. Are they gonna win? It looks like they're gonna lose. They won. No. It's a misfit group with the one Actually. also that has to figure out that one thing, and they get their asses clobbered in the first round of whatever by the arch nemesis team that they then later beat. You know, every- and they 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 do something that looks flashy, but that would be completely shit in real life. The answer to that and one, Jeff, is go watch Friday Night Lights the movie. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually very sad. I'm not saying it, it can't happen. I know. Just I'm just. I'm just. Ninety percent of sport movies or outer space movies, if they're trying to be accurate, are always the same. And I and, and when we were walking yeah. back, I was telling Anna. She was like, she was like, no, I, I need that. You know, like I want him to come home. It would have been really sucky if he not. I'm like, well, that's the t- that's the boldness I want a movie to take. Like I love movies that end with like the mist. If you watch that, you're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, like my friend was upset, and it's like, that yes, was, yeah, you should true. invoke reactions. They should surprise. I mean, okay. Should's a strong word, but I enjoy it when it happens. When I sit down in a movie and I or, like Batman versus fucking Superman, I'm gonna flip this fucking table. Like at the end of it, Superman should literally rip off what? Batman. Hold on. Sh- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you know that that entire, <laughs> you know that entire movie is just to set up the Justice League, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna, but they're basically gonna shake hands at the end of that. But yeah. imagine. But the- we need to we need to just start a, a podcast or a show where we just talk about popular movies and how it would have been better if they ended in different ways. Like go to, yeah. go to a world where literally at the the end scene you're like, oh man, this is intense, this final battle. Superman's like got him in a bear hug, and then he holds him in half and explodes. <laughs> he reaches down and rips out his spinal column right. and they roll credit. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, guess, <laughs> ben Affleck's not doing the next Batman, first of all. That's a big one. You know, and then Superman like the next movie, Justice League, is him killing everyone on Earth, and it's just like this really bloody movie. We could He's do that. punching babies and shit. It'd be incredible. It'd Superman be incredible. apocalypse. Well, like, get behind this. That's, they did. That's that's why the Marvel Cinematic Universe is starting to fall flat for me because it's like it is a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I know what's gonna happen, and the answer is nothing. I it's think Doctor. Like I'm hoping that Doctor Strange is gonna be the one that deviates from that a little bit because that's supposed to be. Now it'll be the dark. time. It'll be by the time it reboots when we'll gone through. We'll, we'll finally go through a phase where like you can make R-rated movies and they'll make a shitload of money. Yeah, yeah. Just, you still have to get there. I like how you all are really setting me up to like kill Piani tonight or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Yep. <I> heard... <laughs> it's gonna be you know, like, like some sort of. I'm just starting some... to feel like Swan Song's like losing its teeth, and I just need to like randomly murder somebody. What the fuck, Listen, Adam? You know. <laughs> there is nothing more thrilling and revitalizing than killing a player character. Let me yeah, tell but... you, buddy. I just rediscovered yeah. this myself. Yeah. Wasn't he like first level? <laughs> yeah, he was first level, first time on the show. Just like, nah, man. Yeah, fuck he was you. actually he was pretty distraught about that. Yeah. Who? It's like I don't want to say who kid, because it's man. a major spoiler. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to spoil. Well, in fact, we've already. Can you say it in much. chat, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I must know. Um, um, yeah, I'll type it. G E. Not not in Twitch chat in okay. the Skype group. <laughs> that's what I, I I figured. That's who it was. Yeah. Yeah. If that doesn't give it away. Yeah. Lucy, she, it, it's it's cool to lose a character you care about. Not you know like every week, but that experience yeah. is actually pretty powerful as well. And that's mm-hmm. that's what I like about movies and books like. And it's always like, you know, why do you like so fucked up movies and stuff like that? It's not like if you if you've watched like uh well, I don't know, like even like butterfly effect going way back, like just how fucked up it is, but it like That's makes you movie. think and makes you feel. Whereas you could sit in a movie and I could literally like get up, go take a shit and a piss, come back and be like, All right, I mean Transformers are still fucking. Yeah. I think the other thing too is that sometimes people go to movies for a different reason. Like I came out of that movie and I was like, that was a pretty inspirational movie. Fair enough. That was pretty absolutely. inspiring. What happened in that movie? That was great. Absolutely fair enough, and and that's what's cool too about like even just art in general. Now we're getting really big, but like <laughs> two people can look at something and come away with two different things. There's no right oh, or yeah. wrong. Answer. Yeah. So, I mean, oh like, shit! I oh. Speaking that. of which, have any of the rest of you played the beginner's guide yet? I was watching Lyric play that <gasps> because oh, you had like a super one. emotional experience with it from what I saw on Twitter. I did, and then I watched Lyric play for five minutes. Is like. How the fuck did Steven have an emotional <laughs> experience How, with this So, game? so like the, there's a couple things about that game, right? So like it it moves really well. The level design of it is really well done. It brings you through the experience. So if you just pop in for like three minutes in the middle of it, you don't have the setup, you don't have the resolution, which are all part of what it needs to be doing. Right. Um, and like it's only an hour and a half, right? But like some people just aren't gonna react to it. That's and that's okay because. 
like all art, different people react to it differently. I gotta say, when we were talking about it earlier, you mean Steven, I was getting very much a you don't get it because you're not in the games industry vibe from Damn. your conversation. No, 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 yeah. no. Not not at all true. That nope. sounds like Steven. I have to I have to say And Adam though, is like, just I, wrote a book about it. It's just pretend games. I have to Yeah, that's right. It's just made up games that don't count. <laughs> um like I, I I'm curious to play it because you know I, I I trust you and you say that things are good, but the Stanley Parable was so bad. So <laughs> so bad that I cannot possibly imagine this game being different enough that I'm going to like it. Like, I just, um, it was I so ham-fisted. You, you made a really salient point about, like, the Stanley Parable being ham-fisted, and there was a part at the end of, of, of the Beginner's Guide, and I don't want to spoil it or anything, but there was a part where it was like, okay, they went too far, this is too ham-fisted. But, like, for me, like, like... I'm sorry if I came off that way and you're actually being serious and it was like, no. oh, no, you're, <laughs> it's it's because you're not in the games industry. But actually, like, I think it's a really excellent game even outside of games development. Um, I mean, I think, I think that's a real thing, though. You can make a game that resonates with a very specific audience and yes. not for anyone else. And mm -hmm. that's, that's like, I think it's a real thing to actually say, like, this is a game designed for an audience who understands game design or is part of making games. Like, it's going to resonate better with them. I was just giving you a hard time. Stanley Parable is still really bad, though. And awesome. I don't know. People improve. People get better at making games. We'll see. Stanley Parable is a completely different kind of game. I haven't Completely. seen it. You know, Stanley Parable was also made a long time ago in the yeah. It was like a game Source game, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, and then like the the like the game was sort of a remake. Translate. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. I, I just felt it felt super like pedantic, honestly. Like yeah, it was yeah. like we know lots of things about making games. We're going to tell you all about them. And here's a clever game we're going to use to do it. And I played it. And I'm like, you're not as clever as you think you are, guys. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's absolutely true. I'm not gonna dis. I'm not gonna dispute. Sure, I'd be on. willing to give this game a chance, but a hundred percent of my willingness is because you say it's good, Steven. So yes. You know what, you guys, Jeff especially, <laughs> Jeff, you should watch and finish. Season one and season two, especially the end of season two of Rick and Morty. Everyone's talking about that. They say it's really good, yeah. Well, it's one, really funny, but two, it has exactly what happened or what you want to happen in movies happen in the TV show. Oh, good. So, there you go. Watch that. Or at least in the finale of season two. But yeah, it was pretty good. I haven't watched I always, it. I always, uh, one it's of my favorite debates is solid. in talks is on art because it's such a fiercely defended, like, People can have, you know, you could sell someone a picture for $150,000, just like a solid red brick, you know, and they're like, well, I yep. experienced something so different out of that. Yep. But then there's this, like, artist, I think he was in Brazil, he actually tied a dog to a, a stick and he put it in the ground for, for an art exhibit and it just starved to death and that was the whole, Dang. that was the experience that people had. Yeah. And then there's, like, this fierce fight in, in defense of it, like, a, you know, the cycle of life and actually the experience you can have from that transcends the life of a single animal and all that shit. But it's like, there are times where it's interesting where you can like kind of subjectively be like, actually, your opinion on art is wrong. <laughs> Complete you know? bullshit. Like, and, and it's funny because that's like an extreme example, but the uh, the concept exists where someone's like, well, no, actually, I, for a quarter of a million dollars, purchase this slug in a jar, and it's supposed to represent literally God creating Earth. And uh, and you're like, no, you're an idiot. <laughs> I think for you me, have too much actually, money. One of the one of the recent pieces of media that addressed art in a way that is perhaps the most accurate to my perception of art is Daredevil, um, and Kingpin and the painting that he buys. And I, like this isn't a spoiler; it's a very like it's an important thematic element, but it's it's not a spoiler of the show. But like yeah. for for us to like look at that painting and be like, why? Why would he buy that? And then to find out why, and like why for him that abstract art produces a very moving emotional reaction. Whereas to other people, it just won't. Like, yeah. that was a really interesting thing. And I think that's really true about art is some people are going to have a powerful reaction one way or another. And some people just aren't. Some people are going to be like, why would you like that? Well, and that's at, okay. Look, look at everything uh, Marina Abramowitz has ever done, right? Where she's just like, this is an art exhibit. I'm going to sit in a chair. You get three minutes to sit in the chair and we stare at each other. Yeah. And then you leave and the next person comes up. Yep. And it's like, yeah, it turns out art and the human experience are both heavily varied in what is... Uh, dead dog on a chain to one person is like a huge emotional philosophical statement to somebody else it's true yeah. and um I, yeah i mean i think you, you just end up in this situation where you can't really say like this is art or this is not art so you just kind of have to be like meh, meh it's art to you i guess yep exactly uh, before we actually start playing jeff what did you travel since the last episode 
Uh, yeah, I just did a, well, not really, it's Sacramento, so a little bit of a travel. I just did a Warhammer tournament last weekend. Um, lost in the finals to my arch nemesis, Steve Sisk, which even sounds like a nemesis. Sounds, yeah. Um, but I took second place <laughs> and $185 of gift cards to more Warhammer stuff, so that's cool. And nice. Big trophy, so cool. Have you done anything to your Titan? Uh, the banners come in tomorrow, and then it'll be completely <laughs> nice. done for now until its replacement head and missiles <laughs> are released. Oh, you bought it more plaster for? I haven't bought it yet, but it literally is going to have alternate heads, and then it has a different weapon that can go on its shoulders. A apocalyptic missile launcher. Hmm. How and much? How much is the just the missile launcher? That vapes. That's more reasonable. It's like sixty bucks. It's like eighty dollars something like that. That's not yeah, too bad. very very reasonable for a small piece of plastic. That's not resin. Too bad. It's resin. <laughs> yeah, not it's plastic. resin. Come on. It's resin. Which is plastic. worse than plastic? They're resin. Uh, mm, <laughs> Steven, yep. uh, past 72 hours, what have you been up to? Oh, man. Mm. Some cool shit that I can't talk about yet, but soon yeah, I will so be able to. you've been riding some roller coasters. Yeah, yep, definitely checking out them <laughs> coasters. It's, uh, yeah, that, that we've announced that the launch date is going to be December 10th, so like we're starting to spin up the wheels into the about final that. sprint, right? Oh, nice. So, you guys, you're going to be yeah. in hell for the next two months then. Great. Pretty much, yep. I'm looking Fantastic. forward to like some 50, 60, 70-hour work weeks. Yeah. Spent a little bit of extra time this evening, but it's fun. Like this is, like, it's been a pretty good production for me. Um, and like we're f on my team, I'm just now starting to ramp up into like cranking out the extra effort to make sure it gets done. So like when that happens late and in a in a compressed period of time, and it's like okay, deadline's coming up, gonna do some overtime to meet the deadline. That's exhilarating to me. Where it becomes a problem is when yeah. it's like months and months of 60, 70 hour weeks, and that's some bullshit. And the games industry has a serious problem with that. But sounds like an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, there's so, definitely yeah. some ups and downs. It's not as funny if you use the same word, but we it's good though. <laughs> Things are starting to go pretty as fast. For I feel like we're starting to crest the hill. Right. Yeah. That's your opinion, Adam. That is my I opinion. Was, Subjectively was it wasn't a funny joke. Objectively, <laughs> we can never say, really. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's a lot of fun. And I I am praying to the high heavens that we can Finish that game off. It's always terrifying. You're, you're aiming. Is, you're aiming your prayers in the wrong direction. Is that right? coming is, out? Yeah. On, uh... It is terrifying to finish off a game because, like, right now, like, God, I don't want to get in trouble for saying it, but like, there's always times during a game's development, yeah. always, where you look at the game and you go, "This is a pile of crap." Yeah, all the time. Um, and then, and then, like a week later, you'll look at it and you'll be like, "This game is going to be amazing." Yeah, like, that I have goes a, back and forth all the time. I have a friend who's also very into game design working on a game and that's literally the conversation that we have once a week is like ah hey it was a pretty good week actually at the end of the week yep. it was great <laughs> yep. oh but fuck it's <laughs> like, just like, that every five minutes it's a different now we're now we're late enough in development that anytime i look at the game and i'm like ah it looks like crap i'm like tearing my hair out but it doesn't like it's oh, it's gonna be great yeah yeah when marcus and i designed our game we totally found that yeah i was like the same kind of like you know, there's the ups and downs, and then it's I mean, it there. was, you know, we took all those mushrooms, we went into the desert, then we yep. ate a bunch of peyote, and we thought, you know, we should totally make a driving oh, so you went stealth to drive game. Then. Okay, smoked yeah. some beer, smoked some beer, and then yeah. we, uh, yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. We, we made a, a uh, microtransaction based stealth driving simulator. Fire. Yep, hack the earth, yeah. we called it. Yep. Right. You two are. Yeah. V relies heavily on augmented reality. What's the uh, what's the name of y'all's company, uh, Jeff? And we, uh, what, it's a double that? double dragon. <laughs> <laughs> You're a subsidiary of Cap Double Cap Dragon Cap LLC. Double <laughs> Dragon it is what I said. Oh, I don't know okay. what company. All right, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Could be anything, basically. Gotcha. Uh, Adam, <laughs> twenty four hours. Done anything crazy? Nothing crazy. No, I played some uh, read only memories today. It was fun. How was that? It's good. It's good. It's like um speaking of ambition. Sorry? What? <laughs> it's uh I don't know, it's just like Snatcher or like old like uh Day of the Tentacle like adventure games. It's fun. It's oh. a good game. I'll probably Does finish it tomorrow. Is that I think. on Steam? It's, it's yeah. not that long. I don't think so. No. Yeah. I think it's like 10 hours or so. Oh, it takes place in Neo San Francisco. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, the music design in is really good. All the sound design is fantastic. Great. Yeah. Cool stuff. Off we'll to maybe look at that. Uh, where did we last? We're gonna do that thing where one thing will bring back everything that happened in the last session. Yeah. yeah. What's it gonna Nanites. be? Nanites. 
Yep, Nanites. there it goes. We're, okay, that's right. We're at the fucking door. And me oh, and we God. are about oh, to God. die. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Right. And the guy's talking to us, and Jeff and what's his name started running back towards oh, us. Oh fuck! Boom! There it is. A little bit of drama here. Yeah. Nanites. And now the comment of Piani dying tonight. Yeah, should Hashtag we cut right into Piani happened. being put into the earth, or what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we could do like that whole flashback later. to like see how. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flip it. <laughs> and, the and then we flash back here. to the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah. Eric <laughs> is just weeping, his eyes red. <laughs> we're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna do this one memento of... style, and we're just yes, gonna start at the end and jump <laughs> around. <laughs> It's like, just to be clear, there's nothing I can do. And you're like, no, no you're, you're just dead, but let's just play it out. We had a meeting, but you were really busy, Weed, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. Um, but more seriously, you're not dead yet. Um, yeah, so the only, like you, in the last episode, uh, Alpharius, you killed the that guy that you found in the room. Uh, remember, you dropped down from the thing, and there was a guy, and he pulled a gun on you, and you, you killed him. Um, somebody escaped in the ducts. Uh, she was running away, and then there were all those people at the Swan Song. And when you got back, you realized that there's something, something wrong with these people. Um, and the VI uh, on the ship uh, started talking to you. Um, and I feel like we've all kind of figured out what's going on, maybe uh, on the ship. Did I, did I identify that it was a woman that shot us at first? Right, I did. Um, it was so the the ID badge in the on the like outfit in the locker was uh, Avelina Santoro, but whether that was the the person who shot out the door at you or not is... Okay, um, so I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Alpharius and Eric, you had just left security, right? Yeah, because um, we were, like, we were... We fought the dude who like took ten bullets and was still fighting, and he had black mm -hmm. stuff oozing back into his body, oh, yeah. and then um, Piani and... What's his face? Higgs. We're like, holy shit, get the fuck back here because we can't fight for shit because we're some, yeah, we're not that class. Uh, so we were going to run back instead of going to the core. Actually, Higgs just shot someone and was getting ready to shoot someone else. So he is that class. Yeah. yeah. In your face. Mm. In your fucking mm. face. Oh, <laughs> Eric. Yes, no, you seem perfectly safe. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Now, please hurry the fuck up and get here. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so you two, are you two running back to where uh, Higgs yeah. and, okay. And Higgs and Piani, what are you doing? They're, uh, the, well, you'd close the doors or started to close the doors and they're like pulling them open and trying to get out. I think we wanted to launch the sand thrower as well. Yeah. Well, you wanted Pi to launch the sand thrower, but Pi is very busy right now. But the, yeah, but he gave us commands on the button of the ship. That's right. Yeah. And now you have. You so have all I had to do was push it. Yep. So maybe we start yeah, with that. Shit. Maybe we see. Um, maybe we'll we see like good. the we see the cameras. Uh, <laughs> it's nice. So anyway, we see yeah, the cameras uh, from the good. ship in the like in your data pad. So it's like kind of grainy and like the the sort of greenish overlay. Um, and then yeah, there are people and there's some clustered around the door. Um, someone is still like like trying to cut open the the ship. Uh, and then you see the weapons console pop up. Uh, and you can fire the sand thrower. And then, yeah, you press the button, and then it poof, pops. And then that was when we went to credits, I think, last time. Yes. So uh, maybe good. we start with static, right? We start with the static of the of the cameras, uh, like, realigning after the firing of the sand thrower. And you can see that there's, like, you know, like, we've seen the, we've seen the outcome of a sand thrower shot on personnel a bunch of times before. There's, like, bodies. But this time, when the static, like, clears, we can start, we see them start to get up. So, like... Somebody like missing a leg, like kind of stands up and like holds himself up on a, a canister and he's like bleeding on the floor. Some of the bodies are still kind of like crawling around. Um, you've you've incapacitated them temporarily, but they they seem to be self repairing. Um, the uh, so you you're watching this on your monitor, uh, Piani and, and Higgs. You see this, and the um, the the VI is just standing nearby watching you. Wait, the VI. Oh, that was was that the person that we initially? The VI saw? is not a. It's not really a person. It's yeah. It was originally it was that woman, the hologram yeah, of the woman. Yeah. That's who's staring at us. Yeah, she's just standing watching you and kind of like smirking a little. Okay. You ever seen a robot repair itself, Higgs? <laughs> I kind of just like. I slowly. mean, would I know that's what it was? First of all. Um. Does anybody I in the party the... have? Well, it's you need Maltech to understand how it works, but I think everybody ha has heard like horror stories about like why nanotechnology is illegal. 
um, because it self-replicates, because it can use anything for fuel. Um, it just turns stuff into itself, supposedly. Higgs, I don't think those things that are fucking something to mess around with. Well, yeah, that's why I shot it in the head and fired the sand. Is anyone live back there? I kind of just turned around and try to look at the door. Better there. getting back up. Well, I sh What? How can we? Is this? Can I just tear its head off and then it's good? How do I make it stop, Piani? You, you're no. You're the computer person. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I wish I did. They're fucking with Pi. All right, well, let's just fucking run to Alpharius and Eric, and we'll meet up with them, and then we'll have them kill everything and get back to the ship. Because if we sit here, we're just going to wait for them to come up and kill us. Are they still trying to get in? Um, it's, of... it's not so much about getting in. They're just kind of, like, getting up and trying to, like, get sorted out. Uh, you've bought yourself some time to run if you want to. I think we run. Okay. Where are you headed? Towards Alpharius and Eric. Okay. Which is, I would assume, that we just kind of follow the line of the, the track that got us here. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, uh, would I... I We don't have any EMP-capable equipment, do we? Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, the oh, ship, the I ship just doesn't. Have, no, <laughs> no, I'm, no. Just I'm just trying to think, like, if we would have anything... Like, what about a stun baton? Could that overload... Uh, maybe. I mean, there's only one way to find out. Yeah. I've got okay. some, like, power cells, maybe I could, like, jury-rig together into something or other. If I had some time, I could probably... So you're having this conversation while you're, like, running towards, you're running towards yeah, each other. Yeah, maybe, but we're screaming, <laughs> yeah. and just like, Hey, Eric, you got any EMP abilities? We got We got the things are self-replicated. They're putting themselves back together. Yeah, like, I, I guess I'm, like... Uh, no, no, Mr. Higgins, I don't have any, wait, I do have some power cells, maybe if I, and then, like, I spout some, like, MacGyver bullshit or whatever. <laughs> I reverse um, the polarity and invert yeah, the tachyon field. You know, yeah, and then I'm like, if I, <laughs> if I had some time, then maybe I could put something together, but it wouldn't be easy. I might need access to a more powerful power supply. Listen, they're fucking with Pi. Something, the computer, something here is trying to get at him. You've got to come help us. Can we take off? Can can we escape? I think there's a step before can we escape. Like, can we fucking get into this room and and stop the threat before we even get on the ship? Well, but we need to, like, like the, the threat is theoretically coming from the core, which is where the nanites are being, like, controlled from or housed or whatever. I think, like... We, we, we wanted to go to the core last time to try to check out what was fucking with Pi. Um, and now it's like we're kind of trying to make our way to each other. Yeah. We're just yeah. trying to, like, reconvene somewhere. Yeah, I guess, like, as, as we're running, we're trying to put together a plan. So, like, what's the first objective that we want to take care of? We want to... Probably save right. Pi and slash the, the ship. So like the only way that we can that we think we can save Pine now is to shut down whatever's interfering with it, right? Yeah, I guess so. So that means that theoretically we need to get to the core with some sort of device that's going to shut it off or damage it enough to interrupt it. Yeah. Okay. I'm still I'm still trying to think of anything that would have an EMP like effect. We are we have... together then or yeah, yeah can we eventually get to each other let's just cut to you um you're uh you're like hiding out in some part of the habitation block maybe there's like a, a recreational area um yeah actually yeah you're in you're in rec you've met in the rec area and um there's it's like a wide open area uh with like three sort of like um like tennis court sort of areas they can be used as like a basketball court or whatever, like a little open area and then you are, uh, you're off to one side. There's a couple of, like, knocked over, like, ping pong tables. Um, mm -hmm. And you've, you've met in this, uh, in this area. Yeah, okay. So, um, like, Eric's brain is running five miles a minute. And he's looking around at everything around him. Um, he's looking through, like, the backpack that he carries with him. And he starts, like, pulling out, like, power cells and, like, astronautics toolkit and, like, you know, a nav comp and shit like that. 
Um, and finally, I, I stop and I say, okay, I have a plan. I think that if we find a good length of copper wiring, I can create a uh, electromagnetic generator. And if I can find a capacitor from a computer on board of this station, then I can hook up these power cells in a relay to the capacitor that will charge it and then fire an electromagnetic pulse. If we can get that right next to the core, it might disrupt it for just long enough for us to, I don't know, escape or maybe just to do enough damage physically that we can, can shut it down. Can you fire it off without affecting the ship? Our ship? Well, I don't really know. It's distance-based. It would all depend on how powerful of a capacitor we find. The more powerful, the more likely it is to affect the core, but also the more likely it is to expand beyond the room and potentially out to the ship. It's quite a long distance. It would be unlikely, but there's no way to tell. Can we, like, pull up schematics for the station and see, like, we where we them. could where we could find some wiring to pull out and just, like, turn it into a coiled sort of generator? If there's some sort of computer mainframe that might have strong capacitors sort of hooked up into it? Uh, yeah, I mean, you want to just, like, grab a nearby, like, terminal and, and try to... See what you can find. Okay. Yeah, I um, mean, I, I know that um, I know that Piani had some schematics from earlier. I don't know if we had detailed enough schematics to get the information I'm looking for now. I'm just like covering the door, by the way, right now with my uh, okay. mag pistol. Can I yeah. use computer to pull something out of a terminal? My computer skill. Um. Yeah. I mean, you can try. Uh. So I mean, you go to the Eric. You go to the terminal and you like tap the button and it comes up um, and it just says initially just like terminal locked right like they're all they're all shut down you can't get access to them just by pressing buttons yeah I just want to fucking rip it open and pull out a capacitor um, yeah I mean like the, the thing is like if you want to like let me understand your plan Eric you want to try to overload the computer system by shunting a bunch of power into it well so I want to build an EMP device by cobbling together pieces so I'm figuring that with the batteries that I have, what I really need is a very powerful capacitor that can take all of the charge and then discharge it all in one burst, send it through a copper coil to create a powerful electromagnetic Magnetic field. Charge, yeah. I'm thinking we would need to go to the core, plant it, set it off, sure. and okay, that, that makes disrupt sense. it. Um, yeah, I mean, the kind of capacitor you're going to pull out of a random terminal is not going to be strong enough for that. Yeah. Um, all right. But we you need to know, find some sort of mainframe or something. Yeah, you in order you'd, to you'd grab need one. some yeah some heavier yeah something that does a little heavier lifting on board. Now it's a science facility, right? It's a science vessel, so they they have labs somewhere. Nice. Um, ostensibly, they would be processing a lot of uh, data uh, there. Um, but uh, yeah. And then all you have to do is just get a bunch of dirt and plant some potatoes in it with some poop, and you you can live on the space station forever. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> Just Sounds like solid. every other science fiction ever. Um, so, so from here, you have these like locked terminals, um, and uh, yeah, and it's you're not having a. Uh, I mean, you can you can like mess with them a little bit if you want to, but there isn't any uh, anything you can scavenge from these particular terminals that are going to okay you okay for this plan. Um. Um. Is there anything? Well, I mean, what are we gonna do? Go to the core then? So, like, we have batteries. We need copper wiring. We need capacitor. So, like, I guess the first objective is to get to the labs so that we can get some sort of heavy duty industrial strength capacitor. So, if there's some sort of computer research facility or any sort of like um, Maltech research facility here, then they probably have really powerful capacitors for maintaining the flow of incredible amounts of energy. Um, and then like, I guess wherever we need to go, either there's some sort of like tools shed maybe where they would have coils of copper wire, or we can just rip out a panel from the wall and like strip out wiring from inside of the space station. So like first, first goal, uh, labs, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. 
At this point, everything that Eric has said is is like hieroglyphic to <laughs> to Higgs. So he, I just kind of like I nod and will shake my or will uh, stroke my non-existent beard. And I'm just like, let's go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, Piani, can you find us a path to the science labs? Yeah, I mean, I I thought I already had the schematics on my data pad, so. Yeah, you do. I think. Um, I thought so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you have like a general layout of the uh, of the the facility. Um, to get to the labs from where you are, you have to go through. Well, I mean, so you're looking at this, and you can see you have to either go through maintenance, or go back to the habitation center and go around to the labs. Mm -hmm. Um. Do we have any sort of idea on how long Pi thinks they can resist the onslaught? Haven't uh, haven't talked to Pi in a little bit. Last yeah, time I, I talked to Pi was at the door. Yeah, we yeah. we may need to like check in and be like, hey, can you survive for eight hours, or are you fucked in two? And that would that would seriously affect our decisions at this point, because it's seven hours to the core, right? And the core is quite a ways away, unless we find some sort of tram that's still operational and can get us there in twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, I guess true. I'm right now. Until you can repair or reactivate the tram system, you're I'm, you're operating on foot, and it's like several hours between any given place. This place is quite large. Yep. Okay, so uh, I guess I just go over the comms and say, um, he "Hello, um, Pi, how are you holding up? If if we wanted to shut off the threat to you, how long could you resist for us to to make an attempt?" So a voice comes back over the comms that is not Pi's. Um, it, it sounds like a predominantly like deep like male voice, but underneath it and behind it, there are several other uh, like modulations that sound not so much like human voices, but like the approximation of them uh, made by a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, and the voice, uh, the voice says, "You cannot stop us. The child will be ours soon, and then your lives are forfeit. Lay down your weapons now." You do not have to die. Uh, Eric, you don't Eric, know what the fuck you're talking about. Eric just replies, "Why are you waiting?" This is no reply. I think we should get moving. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like, from here to the science labs, it's several hours. Uh, from here, you're in wreck. It will take you, if you like run full speed, like maybe an hour to maintenance and then like an hour, hour and a half to labs. And there are trams that connect these. They're just all shut off. Yeah, there's a tram that runs the whole like circuit of the, sh of the um, space station, but it's all, it's all fucked up right now. Piani, Eric, Higgs, new plan. We can't do this fast enough without the trams up and running. Piani, you're good with computers. Alpharius, do you think that you could make some sort of violent distraction that might require extra processing power from the system on board the station? Um, and at the same time, Piani can try to hack the computers to bring the trams back online. Uh, Alpharius just kind of looks at you. <clears throat> and again, his uh, mohawk and beard close up into a skull and then he <laughs> goes running out towards where the people are sieging the craft, I guess. Cool. Um, Mr. Higgins... You seem to have a way with words. Are you very good at enraging people or things? <laughs> <laughs> Does like a dramatic zoom in on Higgs' face and he just see, like a smirk? <laughs> Pop -pop. Am I? <laughs> Pop -pop. It's like, what do you need done? Do you think that this machine we're speaking to would react negatively to a tactic of yours? If we distract it on multiple fronts, I think we're more likely to succeed. I'm all right with that as long as his rebuttal is not that of a gun. Well, we have Alpharius doing that work for us. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Here, give me the compad. Let me think for a second. Yeah. I, all right, I so Al over. Alpharius, you've, you've run off on your own to head back towards the dock. I mean, how far away are we just so I'm not... Like, like a 45 minute like jog from where you are half an hour if you run real fast yeah I guess you're sprinting in that direction yeah oh I uh, before you run out of the room um, I just like levitate 
like six grenades over to you. I say, it's dangerous to go alone. Take these. Sure. He like, you know, shop, shopping cart puts them on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Okay. Gone. So Alfarius, you uh, you take off jogging down the hallway, mm-hmm. um, and uh, yeah, and head off towards uh, towards the dock where the uh, the swan song is. Yep. Um, okay. So in the half hour, or so it's going to take him to get there. What's everybody else doing? What is? I guess I look over at Piani and like, what uh, what's your role in all this? I guess I'm trying to get the the trams on. Yeah, Piani's trying to hack into the computer systems, activate the trams. Alfarius is going to be distracting the war mind hypothetical by <laughs> fighting it. Higgs is going to be distracting it by talking to it and enraging it. So hopefully all of that combined will give Piani like you know, if there's ice protecting these servers, then uh, Warmind is like sending power elsewhere. The ice is going to be lower strength. Peony's going to be able to punch through, activate the trams. So we should like, while Alfarius is going towards the ship, we should get to a terminal that's adjacent to a tram station so that Peony can hack in, activate the trams. We can jump in and go as soon as that happens. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, right. we're just we're trying to find the closest tram station to head there. There's a tram station in in Rec. Basically, every node on the on the shuttle has one. So there's one in Hab, one in maintenance, one in Rec, one in security. Like each each subsector has their own tram station. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I I I head to the terminal immediately. Okay. Sure. Yeah. There's like foot footpaths basically that run all around the the place, and then there's a little like area where there's some sliding a set of like maybe six like sliding doors. Uh, where the tram will like pull up to to pick you up, um, and uh, yeah, there's a there's like a ter- there's some regular like call tram terminals, which obviously you hit them and they just go boop boop and they don't do anything, um, and then there's a a like um, uh, console where you can um, it's locked. There's like a locked metal console, but it says like for emergency use and has like uh, like a key. Uh, you need to open it. Okay, can I smash it open? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, with what? Right. Like it's a, it's just like a metal, it's like a metal, like th- it's like a Can locked cabinet. Can someone get this open? Um, I guess like I would try to pull out my meta tool again. That's got that like crowbar type thing. Can I wedge sure. it in there and start prizing yeah. it open? Maybe Piani yeah, I mean, and I can like work together at it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Make a, uh, um, I got the athletics. Yeah, make an athletics uh, test. You can get an extra. Take the plus one if Piani helps you. Okay. You helping Piani? Uh, yes. Okay. What uh, is going on? Okay, roll? so you have strength and then... Uh, yeah, does Piani roll? Yeah, Piani, just make a roll against uh, target seven. And if you can get it, then uh, Eric gets the plus one. Come on, Piani. Yeah! Nice. Excellent. All right. Nine. Okay, there you go. Okay, yeah. So Not you bad. get it open. Um, it takes a little bit of trying, but yeah, you manage to pry the cabinet open. Um, and inside there are uh, a bunch of both mechanical controls, so like levers for like releasing or activating brakes. Um, mm-hmm. There's a door control to open the doors manually, um, and then there's um, uh, there's like a, a an emergency terminal for accessing like different controls. Cool. I guess like Eric starts working on the door controls and making sure that they're fully open so we can rush in when we need to. Sure. And but, the mechanical stuff, no problem. Like you, you yeah. open the open the brakes, pull the, the lever that opens all the doors. So now you can like lean out and you can see the, the long like dark tunnel. Cool. So can I go to the emergency terminal and see what's available there? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you, you boot it up, it boots into a, a like emergency BIOS. So I guess like we're now at the point where we want to trigger the multiple distraction angles. So it's like we're gonna wait for for Alfarius to engage and Higgs to start like just be like, you know, do the Higgins with the war mind. And then yeah. Piani will try to punch in. I like it. Mm. Okay. All right. So where uh where do you want to start? Should we start with Alfarius? Sounds good to me. I think so. Okay, so Alfarius, you get back to the area where the the dock is. Mm-hmm. Um, the there's the the like cover you were using. There's the door that o- that's open. Um, you can see the doors to the dock are closed, and as you approach, you can see the little like helper terminal start to like flicker and and activate. 
Um, okay. And then the, the VI basically appears. I don't really acknowledge anything like that. I'm looking for a a point from which I can start shooting at the guys that are working on the ship. Okay. Yeah, so you start, like, looking around for that. Um, you'd have to open the doors to, like, go in there. Um, oh, go in the room. The, yeah, I think the, the VI, like, when you walk up to the door, the VI says to you, um, uh, <laughs> it says, it was very satisfying, you know. Um, I think I just, if I try the door. Is it open? Yeah, you're like pulling on it. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's stuck, but it, you can start to like try to pry it apart. Um, and it says, um, uh, burning your planet, we mean. And then with that, he kind of like stops pulling on the door, looks over at the terminal, and says, So it is you. It is. He goes, uh,. He just kind of nods and says, well, then I'm going to enjoy pulling you apart. And then he rips the door open if he can. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, no problem. Like, it, it just, you, like, start to pull it apart. Um, and uh, as you, I think as you open it and maybe, like, go to, like, look in the room, it says, um, we're not so different, you and us. You appreciate the kill as well. You could join us, Alpharius. It would be glorious. He nods at him. He's like, he's like pretty pissed now. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. He usually keeps himself pretty in, in composure, but he's like, he rips the door open and looks at it. He's like, a uh, little bit of Robert De Niro, which is like the first time you've ever seen that. And he like he goes, uh, yeah, yeah, if you could tell me where your home fucking planet is, maybe I could. So the, the woman looks at you and she cocks her head and she's like, have your friends told you about their role in what happened? Uh, he's like, he's like starting to kind of like tick a little bit too and like uh, fucking, he's like, shh, uh, they're not, you're not going to play these games with me. Let, like, me, tell, like let, me, tell you, let me tell you a story, Alpharius, about a warship. And as he says, a warship, I think Alpharius, uh, like, blink clicks on music, and really old fucking Metallica starts blaring out of his fucking head. Yeah. And he rips open the fucking door, and shoulders his rifle, and just shoots the first one that's uh, doing whatever. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so there's, there's like, five of them in the room, and maybe, yeah, maybe that's what happens. Like, the music clicks on, and you just, like, look at it, and then turn around, and psh, like, walk in the room, firing. Um, so meanwhile, uh, Higgs, what, uh, what are you doing? Uh, just meowing into the con. I'm trying yeah. to <laughs> I thought about, like, Higgins wouldn't, like, try to perform a Turing test or anything stupid like that. So he, he's not that smart. So I guess he would just... How far... Can I, like, walk away from, uh, from the rest of the group? Like, would yeah, I be in can, danger you... if I walk, like, 20 feet away from the group? No, the room's pretty empty. There's, um, there's like, tennis balls, like, lying around. And, like, it seems pretty pretty quiet. There's a bunch of, like, hollow screens of what looks like a beach scene or something. But they're, like, kind of flickering on and off. So you can kind of see the, the gray paneled walls behind them. Uh, the room's well lit. And you can, you can get a pretty good distance from your friends but still be able to see them. All right, yeah. I think I get a... I get 20 feet away or something. So far enough away where they're not going to be able to hear the conversation so much. But close enough to where if something happens that's danger for the group of us that I can get back. Sure, yeah. Uh, and then I guess I just call Pi or call the whatever contact I just, had. Just open the comms channel? Yeah, yeah. I guess I just yeah. open the comms channel. I'm just like, hey, uh, is, is the big spooky guy there? <laughs> we hear you, Captain Higgins. So how many of there are you? You say we... Who do you speak for? We began as a single stone, and now are ripples upon the pond. Oh, well, I'm already bored. Shards of broken <laughs> glass. <laughs> yeah, like, this is the Warmind's jam, right? Just getting, like, really needlessly poetic about stuff. It was like, I'm already bored that. about that. Look, yeah. Mr. Warmind, I, I'm done. I, just, get, just get me off the planet alive. Can you do that? I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll get rid of the rest of the team. I just want to get out of here. And I want my ship back. You can have pie. 
So there's a pause. Unexpected. The Higgins. We did not expect this disloyalty from you. Our understanding of you is flawed. Give yourself up, and you will not be harmed. Okay, what is that process? How do I give myself up? Do I just walk so, over? There's a door. There's a door nearby that just opens. Just goes like, and it slides open. Okay, what's beyond this door? My servants await. How many servants are we talking? Give yourself to us, Higgins. Well, I don't want to become one of you. I don't want to become an AI person. I just want to be myself, and I want to get off the planet alive. So he's like, I just want to be me. All right, all right. And so uh, you got to so have someone that they that people can relate to. You know what I'm? Not everyone wants to just talk to an AI person. I'll, look, I'll speak for you. I'll speak on your behalf. How's that sound? We have not had a speaker in some time. Your offer intrigues us. Make a uh, persuade roll, maybe. Uh, okay, persuade. Uh, yeah, make, a, make a persuade roll. Oh, there it is. Uh, tribute charisma assisted no eight. Okay. Um, so uh, it says uh, we will give you access to the doors of your ship. Open it for us. Then we will spare your life and talk about your future. If you deny us, you have no future. So you want me to walk into the ship from where I'm standing right now. You'll let me in easy. And then that's we know all you I have do. control and you're like your data pad, like maybe like buzzes. Open the doors, Higgs. Do I have any visual on what Alfaris is doing at the moment? Um, yes. Yeah. So I think that you see uh, Alfaris come into the uh, into the door and take a like take a shot at somebody. So we do that, or we're we just saying we see that. Um. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can, you can take the shot if you want to. That's fine. Cool. There's still four armor. You said. What's that? Uh. Yeah. yeah. The other armor hasn't changed. No. Okay. A pissed so, off, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you like maybe maybe the sound of the music or like the sound of you just like bursting into the room. Uh, you see Higgs, you see uh, Alfaria shoulder the rifle and fire, uh, and one of the the nearby um, like servants, I guess, just like kind of dodges out of the way, and the, the blast flies past and hits a, like, a cargo container. Um, some of them scramble for cover and start firing back at Alfarius. Um, do you are you gonna take cover, Alfarius, or are you just like walk? Yeah, I ripped open the door and I'm just like in. I'm not standing in the middle of the room or something like that. I'm in the door frame, I guess. Okay. All right. So you can you can see Higgs now the beginning of like a firefight between the two. Okay. Uh. All right. Well, can you uh, can you give me? I assume you have access to this tram, all power for being. Can you get that up and running? Why? Why do you require this? Well, you want me to get? It's got. I'm just a human. All right. I'm not gonna run there. I'll be out of breath. I'm not the best in shape. If you you wanna... can access the security of the ship from where you are, Higgins. Do not toy with us. <laughs> I like look down at the pad. I'm like, oh shit, yeah, you're right. I just press <laughs> this button right here. It, I mean, it, it assumes you're going to press the button. Okay, I'm just like, all right, I pressed the button. <laughs> okay. Obviously, the doors to the ship don't open because I assume you don't pre press don't, the button. I don't actually press the button. <laughs> I'm just like, right. I think this thing. I don't think you understand how this all... Computers are pretty complex, sir. I I don't think you understand really what's going on. No more jokes, Higgins. Look, and I'm then, pressing the button. What do you want from me? You hear the comm line, like, click off. <laughs> I'm just like, well, I guess I hope. <laughs> I just start walking back to the rest <laughs> of the... hope that helped. <laughs> the rest of the crew. So, okay. like, while that was going on... Mm-hmm. Was Piani trying to hack in? Yeah, Piani, what are you doing? Yes, I I was at the emergency terminal that we on or that we revealed. I'm trying here. to get it to actually come. Okay, all right. Um, so your plan here is just to like turn on the tram and get it to this this place, this spot. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Make a luck check for me, first of all, before you do any computering. Okay. A luck check. Oops, uh, we'll just do it this way. <gasps> oh my Ooh. god, I made it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We did it. All right, okay. So uh, you're, you're flipping all these like hard switches, and um, the, uh, the system starts to boot up. Uh, like it, it shows you the Richardson logo, and it starts to like rotate, and it's doing that like hard drive grinding noise. Um, and, uh, maybe right before the, right before the UI pops up, uh, we go to our first break. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. okay. Cool. cool. All right. Let's take our first break. We're only going three hours tonight because we've got to catch a flight to, uh, New York for New York Comic Con. So we'll take this quick break. We'll go into hour two. Don't go to where we'll be right back with more role play swan song around for this. We'll see you then.